In this video, I go hands-on with my top features for the Canon R5C, including five features that I think will particularly appeal to Mac users. Check it out right now. Okay, so the first feature that I think will appeal to Mac users is USB power delivery support. So you can take your Mac charger, for instance, this one right here for my MacBook Pro, plug it in to the Canon R5C's USB-C port, and you'll notice, as soon as I plug it in here, you'll see the battery icon change to USB PD, indicating it is being powered directly from this charger. It can also be powered by a battery pack as well. Now, unlike the Canon R5, the R5C features an 8K HEVC codec with a much more palatable 540 megabits per second bit rate. Now contrast that with the R5, which features an HEVC 8K codec with I think like a 1300 megabits per second bit rate, and the result is less than stellar playback without rendering or without transcoding. But on the R5C with the 540 megabits per second bit rate for that 8K HEVC codec, it plays back much better than the 8K on the R5. And to illustrate this, I'm playing back that 8K footage right here on my iPad mini in Luma Fusion. So the benefit of that, of course, is that you can go in and reframe your shot and still keep 4K resolution from that 8K source material. Now, another thing I appreciate about the R5C is that you can record that 8K all eye footage directly to an SD card thanks to that lower bit rate. So here's what happens on the R5 when I try to do that. It doesn't work obviously, but here on the R5C, I have this V90 UHS-2 SD card, place it in the Canon R5C, and you can see I can switch my destination to SD card just like that, and I can start recording 8K footage directly to SD card, which is great for new Macs with SD card readers. Now, now another cool feature, you can record raw 3K footage directly to an SD card by switching to Super 16 crop mode. And that's gonna give you 3K resolution and you can switch over to your SD card and the bit rate is low enough, 172 megabits per second, that it will, you can record directly to an SD card, raw footage which can be useful if you're delivering as a 1080p final product. And unlike the R5, the R5C features USB device class mode, which basically allows this camera to turn into a native webcam of sorts. So let me show you how it's, how it's done. You go to USB mode and you select video output, UVC, like that. And once you set video output to UVC, you simply connect a USB-C cable and then you plug that cable into your Mac and then your Mac will see it as a webcam, just like this. So here is um, the R5C, you can see it in the list of available cameras for photo booth. And this is video captured directly from the R5C into photo booth, just like that. Super simple, super easy to do. Uh, but what's really cool about this whole thing is that you can record at the same time while you're streaming. So if you're streaming to YouTube and you wanna record a higher quality version that you can mix in with any participants you may have, this is the perfect way to do that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and that really sort of wraps up the first few features that I think particularly can appeal to Mac users. Now let's talk about the R5C even more in depth and the familiar layout that you get. If you're coming from an R5, you're going to be right at home with the R5C. It is literally a carbon copy, basically, of the R5 with the addition of a fan to keep things nice and cool for unlimited 8K recording. So that's really the main difference between the R5 and the R5C. All the button placements are more or less exactly the same. I mean, literally, buttons are mapped one-to-one -one when compared to the R5. So you can see here on the top, you have all the similar buttons that you would find on the R5, all in the exact same spot that you find on the R5 as well. Uh, obviously the, the record button or the shutter button is red, bright red, because this is a video centric camera. But even on the rear, you can see the button placements are literally exactly the same as the R5. The only difference is that you get numerical 
uh, numbers next to each of those buttons, which makes it even easier to assign shortcuts, for instance. Now there's only one really major difference as far as button layout is concerned in this, this switch right here, the toggle to switch between video and photo mode and to turn the camera off. So button wise, that's the biggest difference between these two now. You'll notice on the side, this is where you start seeing the differences between the R5C and the R5. You have this huge exhaust port here. Again, this features a fan to keep it cool so you can have unlimited 8K video recording. Uh, you see the screen is the exact same size. Here's your intake port on the opposite side of the exhaust port. The area for your cards are exactly the same. And the bottom is more or less the same, except you have this obviously, you know, bolted home fan on the rear. But bottom line, the R5C is basically just a slightly larger R5. Now let's talk about that dedicated photo and video switch. So basically what Canon has done here is they have put in two different operating systems in this camera. So it's a true hybrid mirrorless camera. When you switch to photo mode, the interface looks exactly like the EOS R, the R5. It's going to be very familiar to you. And even the menu system is exactly the same uh, as the R5. So when you're taking photos, you have a dedicated photo operating system. You can't take video within the photos mode and you get all the normal uh, focusing reticles that you can switch between uh, various focus modes. So again, very similar to the R5. Now, when you switch over to video mode, the camera shuts down and boots into a dedicated video OS, similar to what you find on the C70 or the C500 or any of Apple's, oh, sorry, I said Apple's, any of Canon's cinema cameras. This is the interface that you're going to find. And it's very much tailored towards shooting video, as you can see here. There's lots of things going on here. A completely different operating system dedicated to video and even a completely different menu system that, again, will be familiar to you if you've used any of Canon's cinema cameras. So the EOS R5C is first and foremost a cinema camera, and as such, it features multiple places on the body where you can initiate a video recording. Of course, the main button right here, it's bright red, you can't miss it right on front. That is how you can trigger a video recording. But there's also a button on top, number 10, and on the rear, number 13, that you can use to start recording video. And of course you can, you can customize 10 and 13 to do other things as well. Now, in some ways you may view the addition of this fan on the back as a negative because it adds a little bit more bulk to the body, but it actually does allow for a feature that I wish was on the R5. And that is the ability to fully articulate the screen without interfering with any of the ports on the side of the camera. So if you have your USB or your HDMI plugged in, you can fully rotate the screen like this and it's not going to run into those ports like it would on the R5. That is a nice feature. Now you can also access the menu system from both sides of the camera. On the left side, you see the dedicated menu button, but sometimes I find that it's awkward to reach the left side of the, of the camera depending on how I'm shooting. So you have a menu button on the right side as well that you can use. And that is super handy to have to easily get into the menu system. Now, of course, one of the big features for the R5C is the addition of timecode support. You have the connector right here that you can find right above the exhaust port for connecting a timecode cable to sync multiple cameras together. Now, there's also a powered hot shoe on top of the camera. Uh, and you'll see the little pins in the back as I uh, get closer. There you go. So you see those pins. So that allows you to use accessories like microphones that can draw power from the camera itself. Now the flagship feature for the R5C is the ability to record unlimited 8K video. The only limit is one battery life or two storage. The camera does not overheat. I've recorded multiple hours. I'm talking like 10 hours straight of 8K video and it was perfectly fine. It was a little warm, but it didn't overheat. It did not stop my recording. Unlimited 8K. Now here's another really cool feature, hot swappable battery. So here is the official Canon battery and you can see my R5C below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can use the USB power delivery feature to hot swap battery. So I have it plugged in right now. It is uh, powered via USB cable. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna remove the battery 
and you'll notice that the, the camera stays on and I'm recording by the way. So the camera stays on, stays recording as long as I have that USB cable plugged in with proper power delivery. So now I'm simply going to swap in the other battery and continue my recording. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So there's the other official Canon battery, plug that in, close the door. And now what happens if I pull the USB cable out? Will it stop my recording? No, it continues to record. So hot swappable batteries. Now another feature, tally lamp. So on the R5, you had a tally lamp on the back, but on the R5C, you now not only have the tally lamp on the back, but you also have it on the front. And this front placement is actually viewable from the top and from the front of the camera. So you have tally lamp coverage in the front, the top, and the back, which is super handy for video recording. I use that all the time. I can't tell you how many times on the R5 I thought I was recording and wasn't. It wasn't that long ago when cameras that could shoot 8K at 60 frames per second demanded tens of thousands of dollars. But here on the R5C, you can shoot 8K 60, but there are some things to keep in mind. First of all, you have to switch to raw LT mode. And once you do that, you can change your frame rate to 60 frames per second. Uh, so we'll do so right now. Now here comes one of the main caveats to this. You'll notice an error message or a, a informational message, I should say. And it basically tells you that, hey, your lens isn't gonna be powered because there simply isn't enough power given the fact that we're recording in 8K60. Now, I guess if you're using a manual lens, you'd be to totally fine uh, to record without power. But if you're using a lens that's fly by wire, like an RF lens, you're going to need to either focus before you switch to this mode and keep it locked at that mode at that point of focus or plug in a USB power source more ideally. You see the error message goes away. Now I can use the lens. I can record 8K at 60 frames per second. We're gonna start the recording right now. You see the lens is working. 8K at 60 frames per second in a camera that you can hold in your hand that costs less than five grand. And you can see that bit rate is ridiculous, 2.57 gigabits per second. <laughs> so you're definitely gonna need some storage to accommodate 8K 60 video, but it's nice to have the option. There's also XF AVC support built into this camera, something we didn't have with the R5, up to 4K DCI 10 bit 422 with XF AVC. And you can choose between long GOP and intraframe. And I find that XF AVC gives you great quality and it cuts like butter. The R5C oversamples 4K and 2K footage from its 8K sensor automatically. So unlike the R5 where you actually had to specify that you wanted the 4K enhanced mode, it just does it here on the R5C. Now on the R5, when you open the card reader door, the camera shuts off. But here on the R5C, you could be recording and still open the card door. Now it will tell you not to remove the current card that it's recording to, but you could still open the door and access the other card for instance. So if I wanted to pop out the CF Express card and still keep recording on my SD card, I can do that. And that's really why such a feature is so handy. And of course I can do vice versa. I can switch over to the CF Express card, start recording to the CF Express card, and then pop out or insert the SD card. So again, it's telling you now it's accessing CF Express. Don't remove that, but we can pop out the SD card just like that. And on the R5C, I've noticed much less CF Express error messages or buffering messages. You know, when your camera just stops recording saying that the, the card is too slow, even though you know the card is fast enough. Well, that happened to me all the time with the R5, but on the R5C, I rarely get those buffering error messages. Now you can also access the menu while recording on the R5C. You could not do this with the R5 operating system, but you can on the Canon R5C. And that's a super handy feature if you wanna go in and change something while recording. Now, you also have controllable fan noise. And this, this fan can get fairly loud if you turn it up to high, but there are options that you can use to make it almost inaudible. So you have your fan mode, your fan speed. You can obviously turn that up to maximum or low uh, and it gets fairly loud, but if you set it to automatic mode, it'll throttle down that fan to the point where you cannot even hear it while you're recording. It's pretty cool. Now, there's also a fully customizable set of buttons. You have 13 customizable buttons all located around this camera. As you can see there, they're all labeled for easy customization. So 10, 11, 12 on the upper left-hand corner on the back, you have 13. 
you can go in there and customize these buttons but it goes beyond just the simple you know being able to pick and choose from different menu options that they have preset for you where you can actually go in here and assign any menu to a, a shortcut so for instance if i want to assign the 13 button i can go into the user selection menu and now i can actually go throughout the menu and choose any option in the menu to assign that to a shortcut that is so cool and it, again it makes working with this camera super easy so i assign it to the tally lamp which you know just for demonstration purposes but that allows me with just a press of a button to access the tally lamp menu just like that super handy feature now one of the benefits of a cinema a canon cinema camera is that you have face only autofocus so on the r5 you had face autofocus but it was basically just face priority but here though you get face only so it will only target your face and when your face is not in view it will not continue to hunt for a focus point it'll simply just lock it in focus right there and then till your face comes back into view it'll keep it locked at that spot so see no hunting even when my face leaves the frame now there's also because of the cinema operating system shutter angle something that was sorely missing on the r5 for video shooters but on the r5c you can choose your shutter angle so i like to keep it locked at 180 degrees one of the cool things about the r5c is being able to, to use or take advantage of the various crop modes so you have super 35 crop mode if you enable that basically it's going to crop in uh, and allow you to shoot 6K resolution when you choose RAW LT or ST. So now you'll see the resolution here is 6K, Super 35. You have to appreciate the added flexibility that this brings to the table. Now, you also have HQ 6K RAW. So an HQ mode for RAW that you didn't have when not cropped in. So now you can choose raw HQ and you'll notice that the bitrate on that is ridiculous. 2.1 gigabits per second, falls short of the 8K 60 bitrate, but still very impressive. Now on the R5C, you can reduce the ISO below 800 when shooting raw. So I'm recording raw here and notice I can drop down the ISO from 800. Watch it. Just like that 640 500 400 320 so that is something you could not do on the r5 super handy feature when shooting in, in bright conditions now your focal length is also displayed on the screen thanks to that cinema os and that's very handy so you don't actually have to look at the barrel of your lens you can just look at the screen and see your focal length just like that super handy feature all right so let's talk about some other cinema related or cinema things that can benefit video shooters. So you have uh, uh, false color, you can enable that, and waveforms as well, so you can enable that. So these allow you to monitor your, your exposure using these advanced tools that would normally require an external monitor to get, but you get them here on the R5C built in to the OS. Now, of course, let's talk about some of the things that I'm not a huge fan of. And I think one of the things that you'll immediately recognize is that the battery life for the R5C with the standard Canon batteries is not all that great. Uh, battery life is definitely well under an hour when shooting raw AK video. Uh, and it's very noticeable. So you can see I'm recording now, you'll see that the time drops down from like 60 minutes to 50 minutes, just like that, definitely noticeable. Now I use quite a few third-party batteries with my R5, but I noticed with the R5C, third-party batteries aren't fully compatible. So they will work. You can see a third-party battery here from newer. Uh, these batteries do work, but you'll notice that when you turn the camera off and then you turn it back on, the camera does not power back on. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to turn it off, wait for it to shut down in just a second. The green light will go off. All right. So it's powered off. Now I'm just going to simply turn it back on and uh, yeah, nothing happens. You actually have to take the battery out. If you're using one of these third party batteries, you have to take the battery out, put it back in close the door before your camera will come back on. So something to keep in mind there. 
Now, here's one of the really frustrating things. If you wanna use the advanced wireless transmission features and even hardwired ethernet, you have to purchase the WFT R10A battery grip slash network adapter. That may seem okay on the surface, but first and foremost, it's a thousand dollars, right? For this battery grip with the built-in wired and wireless LAN features. But what's crazy is that this battery grip doesn't allow you to use two batteries to power the camera. So each of the batteries works independently, supplying power to the camera and the wireless file transmitter. So in other words, if one of the batteries dies, you have to replace that one battery, sort of defeats the purpose of a battery grip. And that's why the WFT R10A gets pretty terrible ratings. Now here's something that's not a huge deal, but I found it a little bit annoying is when you try to power off the camera, you have to kind of concentrate to get it in the off position and avoid moving over to the opposite position. It's so easy just to go from photo to video or video to photo when you just want to power off. And because this has its own cinema operating system, there are no custom shooting modes that you normally find when taking photos or with the R5, for instance. So here are the custom shooting modes for the photos operating system, but you don't get those same custom shooting modes in the video operating system. And here's something else that kind of stands out. You don't get as many focus options as you do with the R5. Uh, on the R5C in video mode. So you have the focus, focus rectangle. You can move that around, of course, and you can change it from large to small. That's all good. But you have a bigger selection of focus options on the R5 or on the R5C when it's in photo mode. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. Look at all these different focus options, large zone, large zone, vertical zone, AF, expand AF area, et cetera, et cetera. It's just much more robust as far as focus modes are concerned. Now, there's also no way to reset the focus reticle just by pressing down in the middle of the little joystick like you can on the R5 or in photo mode on the R5C. So just something that's not a huge deal, but it's just a little annoyance that I found that I miss. Now, here's something that is going to annoy a lot of people, no doubt. The fact that there is no full size HDMI it's still that, that, I guess it's micro HDMI or mini, I can never remember. I think it's micro. And then there's no XLR port like you find on some of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. It's just a 3.5 millimeter input. So that's another thing. And then no ND filters, something that's extremely handy for cinematographers when shooting outdoors and bright light. You can, of course, put a variable ND on the front of your lens that's what a lot of people do. But here's the really cool thing about the Canon system. You can actually get this little guy. It's basically a variable in the uh, drop-in filter that sits between the R5C and your lens. The downside, you have to use EF glass. So if you have a lot of EF lenses, this can be very handy. Uh, drop-in filter, variable in the, super nice to have if you have a lot of EF glass. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at my favorite R5C features. Some features will definitely appeal to Mac users in particular, I think. And a lot of the features are just great cinema focus enhancements over the regular R5. Now that being said, it's not a perfect camera. There are some things that I wish Canon would address, but in my opinion, this is definitely one of the best bangs for the buck as far as cameras go today. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.